Hi, my name is Tom Anderson and I'm a data scientist at the AI lab at the British Antarctic Survey. And myself and my colleague James Byrne will be contributing a workshop as part of AI UK, where we'll be demonstrating our deep learning framework for sea ice forecasting. And we've given this framework the pet name IceNet to keep things nice and short. Now, I'm just going to spend five minutes here telling you a bit about the context of sea ice forecasting, why we would want to do it, and a bit of an introduction to the framework that we've developed. So what is sea ice and why would we want to forecast it? Well, uh, no prizes for guessing, but sea ice is a layer of frozen water that sits on top of the ocean. Sea ice covers vast regions of the polar oceans in the Arctic and in the Antarctic. And it expands in the frigid winters to cover a very large area and then retreats away to a smaller extent as the temperature warms in the summer. And this annual cycle has been occurring for millennia. Now, the upsetting human influence context that we have here is that anthropogenic warming has caused the Arctic to warm at three times the rate of the global average. And as a result, there have been stark impacts on the amount of sea ice. As you can see from the statistic on the slide, we've lost 25 Great Britons of summer Arctic sea ice since 1980. And from the chart on the right, plotting the September sea ice extent against time, we see this dramatic, almost linear decline, which quantifies as about losing half of the area covered by sea ice in the Arctic in just four decades. Now, this change has substantial impacts on people and wildlife. Nearly 4 million people live above the Arctic Circle, including indigenous communities who have lived near the coastlines of the Arctic for tens of thousands of years and who depend on sea ice for hunting and travel where it forms a rich part of their history and culture. Furthermore, uh, declining sea ice means that wildlife in the Arctic have been losing crucial habitat and we're already seeing this impacting populations. Now, we could potentially use accurate sea ice forecasts to some degree as an early warning system to help us to adapt and mitigate to these impacts, similarly to how weather forecasts help us to anticipate extreme weather events like hurricanes. Unfortunately, sea ice forecasting is very difficult to do, and that's partly because sea ice has very complex interactions with the ocean beneath and the atmosphere above. As a result, physics-based forecasting systems have struggled to produce accurate forecasts. Now, we attempted to tackle this challenge head-on with some funding from the Alan Turing Institute, which helped us to develop IceNet. And you can see a schematic of our deep learning system in the slide here, where we've got environmental data coming in at the inputs, followed by a series of deep learning processing layers and a sea ice forecast into the future being spat out at the output. Now, following our proof of concept study, which was published in Nature Communications last year, further funding from the Alan Turing Institute with a co collaboration with the research engineering group at the Turing has led to James Byrne and James Robinson developing a flexible software ecosystem for generating daily AI sea ice forecasts with IceNet for both poles and running in real time. So if that sounds interesting, then please come along to our workshop on the Wednesday at 10 a.m., where you'll be getting a sneak peek into our software ecosystem, where we'll be demonstrating our API and our command line interface, as well as how you can interface with the data processing pipeline to build downstream tools based on our CIS forecasts. So thanks for listening and hope to see you there. Cheers.